hello everyone uh yeah hope, hope you can see me and also hear me uh good uh yeah thanks for joining uh this uh, uh jmb on tuesday for my sharing so first of all i'd like to thanks uh jmb to give me opportunity to share um, my experience using uh, jmp in uh yeah just one of my many problem solving uh throughout the years so today i'm going to share uh one of my problem solving uh the methodology for the uh, sidewalk cracks uh, which uh, happened on uh, the uh, product which is in a uh, wafer level chip skill packaging right so and how i use jmp to achieve or uh, some of my uh, the objective and goal for this problem solving. So without any further delay, let me uh, move to uh, next slide. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, this is all started with the uh, uh, one quality incident, uh, which we uh, actually happened during some test screening. So we have, uh, uh, encounter the uh, die crack or die chipping issue uh, in one of our product, which is a package in wafer level CSP. So um, yeah, so the problem is that we we have a, a very limited uh, sample, right? For us, uh, you know, to do the uh, failure analysis as well as we for us to do the uh, root cause investigation. So. Um, in the early stage of the uh, problem solving, right? Um, so uh, the team actually they are not able to nail down to uh, is any potential failure causes, right? They fail to identify any uh, failure uh, causes, right? So that in the result that uh, there's no conjectures of statistical term could be derived. So it means that uh, the team do not has a very good hypothesis, a failure hypothesis that they can use to validate, right? And as such, there's no uh, solid conclusion, right? Uh, that can be made. Okay. So if uh, yeah, we if this uh, issue is station is not changed. It will likely uh, escalated uh, to our management, higher management, uh, right? Then you will be a more frustration, more higher pressure, right? So as such, uh, there's a hard task force team has been formed, which uh, led by myself, right? Um, and yeah, and then the task force team is, uh, yeah, able to drill down to basically uh, two of the uh, assembly process, right? So. And the team also uh, managed to uh, establish yeah, this uh, structure problem solving methodology, right? Which um, fit to this issue, uh, which uh, in this methodology, yeah, therefore that we try to uh, uh, analyze uh, a lot of data and those data that uh, actually relate, uh, related to the uh, process or, or this issue. Right, so for both uh, empiricals and statistical type of analysis. Okay, so here is where uh, the team uh, utilize the uh, some of the uh, important or uh, so-called great uh, features or fun function in the JMP, right, to help us in the analysis. So we managed to come out some uh, new problem hypothesis. Right, so which I'm going to share more, uh, which will go uh, is actually uh, also will be more related to the uh, failure causes, right? Uh, related to the uh, wafer level CSP band assembly process, right? As well as we we do not right uh, uh, exclude right the possible problem from the uh, which induce could be induced from this test screening. Right, so we make use of this to for our further verification. Uh, yeah, at last, uh, yeah, we managed to identify some of opportunity or improvement, right, and yeah, we able to close the AD uh, with this test in uh, in screening induced issue, and yeah, we don't see um, replication of similar issue for 
almost about six, seven months from now. Okay, so this is basically uh, the overview of this uh, uh, sharing for today. So let me move on to, uh, yeah, next slide, more details. Okay, um, the, yeah, so this is first is the problem statement, right? It's the, uh, basically it happened during uh, some test screening running. Uh, involves uh, test house A, assembly house B, and the device will be uh, termed as X. And the package is a uh, uh, WLCSP, which is a wafer level chip scale packaging. Uh, as you can refer to the right hand side, this is the uh, the chips, how it, the chips looks like for a wafer level CSP package. For those you are familiar with, then you know that the, the wafer level CSP is actually um, is, uh, basically it's just a bug of the silicon. Right, put some bump on it. So basically, for this package, it do not have any encapsulated, uh, for example, by a uh, more compound. So it's very vulnerable to uh, chipping, right? Because it's didn't protected by any medium like more compound or encapsulant. Okay. So um, the issue is that uh, the test house A the reported. Uh, uh, very high uh, test rejects from two wafer lot after the surface mount technology process. So for those you know, surface mount technology is like we uh, uh, mounted the wafer level CSP products onto a PCB box. Just an illustration here. And some of these rejects actually they found a sidewall crack before, uh, even before uh, we uh, demounted. So this indicated that the problem could be either right happen uh, at the uh, assembly process or labor CSP process, or even or it, it can be also happen uh, before the mounted the units on the PCB board, right? So yeah, it could yeah both also uh yeah yeah are guilty, right? So we do not know. And here you can see the some illustration of the sidewall chipping. On this, so you can see this is the bare silicon structure. So there's a crack and chipping here. So it's um yeah, it's quite quite vulnerable to the uh, any uh, external right or even the process right with the uh, uh, mechanical impact right. And here uh is uh, just for sharing this uh, reject rate is about one hundred thirty six ppm. So of nineteen unit of one hundred forty k are impacted material. Okay, um, yeah, I think thing is a uh, high uh, PPM, so it's kind of uh, rather low. Um, so um, here I list down some of the challenges during the, um, before we start, uh, start to engage on this issue. So basically the test out a only feedback, two out of 19 rejects for our analysis and investigation. So, um, 17, yeah, the rest of 17 actually they were scrapped. Yeah, they not managed to uh, retain, right? So, so this make the PPM even lower, right? With the only two units available, they're even more challenging. As you know, uh, low PPM issue is always a uh, very headache issue, right? Yeah, so if you uh, compare to those uh, high PPM, like uh, two, three, four percent count kind of failure, that is much uh, more easier to me. Right, uh, compared to this case, okay. Another challenge is uh, basically uh, we did not perform any, any electrical test, right, to actually try to get the ECID or UDID, right, uh, embedded inside the chip. Uh, as you know, as you guys may know, uh, for ECID and UID, is, uh, this information actually is able to tell us the location of the units or the rejects uh, within the wafer. So that uh, if we really can get this involved, it's really helpful that whether this will know that uh, the uh, the wafer number where it come from and then is it uh, coming from a certain area within a uh, wafer so that we know we can trace back, uh, correlate it back to our process, right? So somehow we are not able to do that, right? Because the reason being that uh, we also worry to uh, further damage the uh, only two available rejects. So if uh, further, if it uh, gets damaged during the testing, then it may, it may lose some evidence or some info, right, from the uh, unit. Okay, so we are not able to do that. So it make the thing more even more harder. 
All right. Um, and then the issue also could be contributed, contributed right, due to both assembly test house A as well as assembly house B, right? So we don't uh, exclude either one of them. So uh, th the reason is that um, we don't actually receive any uh, similar issue from other test house, right? And there's no uh, recurrence from this test area about uh, for the beginning of the investigation at the time that we engage is about two months, right? So it's uh, not, yeah, we don't really get any uh, further uh, information. So that's why, therefore, we don't really as good uh, test out as, yeah, uh, but we still, maintain the uh, you know the focus on uh, assembly house B and uh, all the failure hypothesis are actually ruled out by assembly house B right during the initial investigation so it means uh, if we rule out all the possible uh, causes that can be deduced from assembly house B the only problem could be only happen at the uh, test out A right but this could be a uh, very risky and uh, very dangerous uh, conclusion, right? It's based, based on this, uh, unless we have a very solid uh, evidence to show this, uh, this, this uh, you know, area of investigation, but this, this we don't have, I don't think we have a confidence to do that yet. If, otherwise, if, we keep, uh, if the test out A keep reporting a new reject, right? So that, could be uh, a, a trouble, right? A big trouble, right? So, okay, the last but not least on the challenge will be, yeah, we have a management challenge and also, uh, yeah, Tesla is also pushing us to really find out the root cause, what could be the reason of that. So, this basically are uh, the challenge, some of the key challenges that we receive. Okay. Um, okay, uh, yeah, we have a, for this task, task force team, so actually we actually uh, prepare or we come up some goal and objective for us, right? So yeah, so first goal will be uh, the task force teams has to be led by Six Sigma Black Belt, uh, which is myself, right? If this task force team was formed at the beginning of this year to continue driving the root cause investigation. So this one basically is uh, chief, it's done, it's checked. Second thing is uh, we like to focus on the uh, assembly process for the device X, right? So this is our area or expertise. So we uh, like to focus here. But uh, as you know, um, the assembly process could be a lot, right? So even we can focus on certain process, but that assembly process also could consist of a lot of process parameter. Um, could consist of a lot of uh, few materials, right? The machines, right? All these uh, uh, material machines, uh, yeah, are all could be contributed to this. So it is not so uh, straightforward, right? When you say you want to focus, right? So we must have uh, some systematic, right? Say so for we come out at this uh, deep dive investigation with this structure problem solving strategy. So Deep dive investigation, I believe everyone, I mean, most of you have heard about this, but uh, deep dives, you say it's uh, sometimes it's uh, very simple, right? It's simple wording. But if you deep dive without any systematic uh, way that you be have a chance, chances you will um, you may get lost during your investigation, you may introduce a lot of unnecessary uh, time to investigate those uh, non-relevant data of uh, you know information, so you may you may go to uh, yeah you may you may go to nowhere right, at the end of your investigation. So, uh, systematic uh, st structure problem solving is important here. I think so. That's why we come up some methodology which I can share later. Yeah. Then the next one is to we have to ensure. This is the most important one uh, today. So to ensure substantial data of SMS how they are uh, analyzed and review uh, before we uh, rule out this SMS house B, uh, 100%, right? So this is here, uh, yeah, we uh, try to utilize uh, some of the important functions, features from JMP that help us to ensure we really analyze thoroughly on the uh, data, right? In many uh, angles, uh, many ways, interactive, 
right? Not only individuals, okay? Okay, next, uh, yeah, we have to identify new hypothesis for the problem, uh, potential failure cost for the yeah, opportunity of improvement. And, and, and how be so, we actually uh, managed to come up with some new hypothesis based on the analysis. And then, yeah, of course, um, last but not least also, we also hope we can identify some risks that could be induced by uh, a test house uh, to some uh, experiment. Okay, so these are the, all the key uh, objective, right, for this uh, thing that I mentioned earlier. So uh, JMP helps us to achieve some of the goal. So not all, but the, yeah, some of the goals which is important that look into substantial data analysis. Okay, so we we come back to this slide again at the end my sharing so to check see whether what we achieve later on. Okay, okay now uh, I will share this um, yeah this some um, process flow for the wafer level CSP for those you may not uh, familiar with. Right. So basically, for wafer level CSC process is divided into uh, two major process flow. I would say that uh, first is the bumping, right? Whereby, uh, yeah, the goal of this is to uh, put the uh, bump right on the on the wafer, right, before it gets to the assembly site. So the assembly is the site that uh, we will do uh, marking, you know, uh, singulation, right, AOI. And tap and tap and reel and pick and paste, right? So basically, based on uh, the uh, subject matter expert, so we also have to base on some of the uh, input, right, from the expert or specialist that uh, this kind of die chipping or die crack, right? So it should be after it should be occurs after the die gets singulated, right? And as well as when there's the pick and place from the sound wafer into the reel. Whereby the, when during the pin and place, uh, the plot this is on, so there could be a die to die knocking, also all these things will come in on during the pin and place placement. Right? So all these uh, two process that actually we are going to focus for the deep die and with the SPSS. So since this device do not have standalone AOI, so yeah, that's why we will focus on these two. So I thought this is a very quick uh, deal down. Right, based on the process, okay. But the more case will be on the yeah, which process parameter? How do we do down to the process parameter? material machine that has a common that we like to deep dive, okay. Right, so this is basically share the overall view of the web level CSP process. Okay. Say this is uh today's yeah going to share our first our touch on the problem solving methodology. So the uh, basically I divided this into five important steps. First is the uh, problem definition. So I think here normally uh, we will utilize try right, to define the how, where, uh, what, and be when right to happen so try to utilize all these questions to ask us so which to define problem which is quite uh, standard right you want to understand the problem uh, clearly right and then we we'll, then the next step is the process exploration which is to me is the most uh, critical here because this process is going to uh, help us to gain a, a more uh, process input, right? More gain more data so that this data could be fit into the hypothesis analysis. Then from there, we will come out uh, relevant uh, so-called uh, more relevant uh, hypothesis for validations, right? So, so this here, exploration is where uh, basically, on the community is where we going. I going to focus and share more on how how JMP helps us here. So for process provision, basically there are two steps. First is the uh, baselining. Baselining the names that uh, we want to understand what could be the baseline. Is the could is the, could this issue be a baseline issue, right? So if this is some baseline issue, yeah, it will it will give us some clue and that. It will help us to fit, fit into the hypothesis, right? What could be the causing the baseline issue, right? 
Another thing is the uh, important step here is the community. So this community basically uh, divided into three small steps. So I'm going to share you later on. Okay, but here community is the where we are going to focus today with, uh, with by sharing how we utilize GMP uh, functions or features to help us. So here basically I think you probably know some of these key function feature in GMP like uh, the visualization. I think GMP has a very powerful visualization uh, analysis that you can uh, do a lot, a lot of wonders on the uh, graphs, uh, uh, charting, right? So here's we try to utilize this. Another uh, powerful uh, features in GMP will be on this uh, linking dynamic graphic, right? So it's uh, yeah, this really help a lot, help us on, help me a lot on this analysis, right? Okay, then the the other one is the uh, this function here basically to analyze the combination effects we are, so that we don't look at the, this process parameter individually, right? We want to also explore this, if there's, whether there's any interactive of this uh, few or more than two kind of parameter so that we understand uh, what will be the relationship and we can also visualize them through some interactive dashboard that help us to understand more on the interactive in this process, okay? So from here, uh, we will come out hypothesis. We validate uh, two other experimental, some DOE or even simulation, okay? Right, so then you come to, we hope you come from here, we will try to hope to come out uh, a solution for the problem, okay? So basically this is uh, just an overview, right, for the problem solving methodology that uh, we're going to do, but the more detail you know, this area, okay. Uh, I move on to my next slide. So this will be the um, basically the uh, summary table to compare between the current and the next step uh, of during for these uh, four major uh, problem solving step. Uh, for current meanings that the uh, the previous team that. Uh, for problem solving team, the uh, what the team has uh, actually been uh, trying to do right before the the task four teams has uh, stepped in right. So the next step will be more like uh, some of the new idea or new input based on the brainstorming from the task four team that we would like to do some different compared to the uh, team before. Okay, so but here I would like to. So, like I say again, for this baselining community, is these two are the most uh, to me is most important step to help us to gain more uh, key process input variable, right? So that we can fit in to the hypothesis, right? So that we will be more confident on the hypothesis that uh, we're going to validate through some uh, experiment. Right, so to me, um, you can come out with a lot of hypothesis based on your, you know, a lot of people come out with hypothesis based on experience, right? When you look at this chipping crack, you know, okay, this could be like this area, you know, could be like this. Uh, yeah, we can come out 10 hypotheses, but these are too many, right? Hypothesis that you will waste a lot of time because we, and then we know we do not have that kind of a luxury of time, right? Because we are, yeah, we are, we are urged to find out what could be a problem by looking to ensure that we're looking at the substantial data before we will do out anything, okay? Right, then there will be, uh, yeah, this uh, experiment. So here is, process complete is where we're going to focus today, okay? But uh, let me go, go to, quickly go through the comparison. First is a baselining. The previous team, they increase uh, some sample size for the backside eye out. Uh, then the uh, task force team actually will, yeah, right to add the 100% side wall eye out for the base uh, line levels uh, checking. So uh, for those who know, the uh, side wall eye out actually is more effective compared to the backside out to, to detect the die crack or die chipping. Okay, so this is more on the technical side. So I'm not going to go through. 
Okay, under commodity, there are three steps I mentioned. First is the failure analysis. First, failure analysis to me is the, to be honest, is uh, the most important. Right? Because a successful, right, successful FA actually can help uh, save a lot, a lot of time. Right? We then you don't even need to go through so many data. Right? We met, uh, but, but sometimes, the FA is not easy to, to tell us, right? Or not easy to, to identify as a real issue. Die cracks, yeah, is, uh, is with, sometimes could be very subjective, right? But certain defect mode could be very easy. Like for example, like contamination that you can identify through the FA, then you know, right? Uh, what kind of unique contamination, but for not for the die cracks or die chipping, okay? So you, I mean, it will leave us a lot of uh, question mark whether is it this, this problem is it really due to an assembly problem or could it be due, could it be due to some other issues like a test screen user attack, okay? So the previous team, they observed sidewalk cracks, they observe physical damage on both. Yes, this is uh, what we know, everyone can see, but uh, yeah, but is it, is it uh, sufficient? So no, so we will look into other things like uh, curb shift, Right, so I will tell, I'm going to show you how to go look into this, how to come to come out to this, and also we want to perform some SCN inspection to look into more details, right? And second step will be process abnormality. The uh, previous thing they say they do not see any abnormal machine stoppage record, so we decided to maybe we pay a visit to the line, so we take a line our own eyes, or we can also look into their logs, uh, machine logs, right? For the raw data analysis. This is very powerful and it's actually, we can see a lot of things for machine log. Okay, so that, that is more on technicals, not on statistical. So today, so I'm not going to talk much on here, but this is the very powerful uh, analysis that we can help us to go to the, the area that we want, okay? So here is the one, the process community they're going to uh, share more. Um, so previous thing, they use a limited uh, uh, data for a univariate analysis, the so one direction, and there's no community. So we extend to bivariate, multivariate, even outline analysis uh, beside the univariate. For hypothesis, yeah, they draw all hypothesis. And so you hope you come up with some new hypothesis based on the input from baseline and community. And from there, uh, we we'll hope that we can come out some uh, experiments to validate this, to compare with the previous team that did not come out any uh, simulation or DOE because yeah, the hypotheses are not solid or even they can't don't come out in this hypothesis, okay? So this is the comparison before and after. So next I will go Okay, sorry. All right, um, this is the next step, the future, right? So that, uh, yeah, that basically the result, right? So on the thing, so it's a summary, it's a, it's a hierarchy, it's a hierarchies charts. So um, I'm going to explain the whole chart first before I, I, I go to this JMB uh, sharing, okay? So as I mentioned earlier, the baselining community, they are, these are the areas that we'd like to gain some more uh, input that relevance to the investigation, right? Those are really not relevant, right? We don't spend time there because we don't really see community, right? So let me try to explain here. The baselining, we try to do 100% inspection, right? So here, um, sometimes 100% may not be able to do, right? Because of the maybe the uh, sufficient or the not, not, don't have the resources, or maybe it's too expensive to do 100%, or maybe we don't have a time to do that also, right? So you have to choose wisely on your baseline, right? So 100% um, is always good, but sometimes it could be uh, costly and uh, time consuming. Right? We don't have the kind of capacity also sometimes, right? So you have to base on your uh, process, your, your understanding on your own product, Right? So that you define properly. FA, the first level of FA, you can done quickly, but 
FA should not be stopped at uh, what you should stop, right? So sometimes you based on the uh, community and it sees all these things, you can feedback, right, to, to the FA team that, that we can further uh, perform any further FA, right? So like uh, we have done on this laser groove and also even die soccer shift when I come to that. Uh, SEM, yes, you could see a uh, more detail. Okay, process community, like, uh, yeah, the best one of the thing is you should go, maybe you should go to process line to validate ourselves, right, to look into it. So maybe different eyes will have different, you know, uh, seeing things differently. So different people experience also have seen things differently. So this is one of the area, right, that so you can pay attention. And machine log analysis, like I mentioned, yeah, this uh, definitely is, uh, is very important that we got machine logs will you will be there the you will tell us every single step that uh, what has happening right on the machine and then of course the process community yeah we will basically be uh, divided into four three step here yeah. whether you want to look into univariate level count analysis you can even look at process sequence using a jmp and uh, bivariate analysis and also as well as multivariate small and two right analysis which is over here. Okay, we'll come to that. So based on all these uh, data in, input analysis, right, the empirical data will be basically based on uh, observation, right? Observations based on experience, right? Data, which is this portion, as well as the statistical analysis, which you normally I will say cover on this portion here. So with this, those data right so we will revisit the is is not you know, hypothesis then from there you will definitely conduct some experiments right as well as the like, fa like i mentioned you may revisit your fa analysis so that you can check further is there something that you may miss during your first FA plan because um sometimes you have a lot of people right they based on experience and try to do into but uh, actually we can do find more things from FA right with support of uh, all this data here okay so basically this is the overview of this uh, next step on the result so now I'm going to uh, show you how I use uh, GMP in the analysis for first of all I will show you this distribution for the outlier our spec uh, skill checking okay so uh, this is a distribution univariate analysis, the first level. Um, yeah, I think everyone know distribution. It's just a distribution chart, to be honest, right? It's just a histogram. But GMP, in GMP, it does not just like, uh, you know, distribution, right? So it has the this dynamics linking function that able us to visualize or identify very easily on the process parameters, machine materials, which is common, which is uh, more outstanding compared to the uh, so-called the uh, good lots between good lot and the bad lots. So here is uh, uh, showing that the uh, bad lots actually in the like, shaded here. So all these are indicators, the bad lots in the chart here. The, dark, the blue color indicates the, 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 good, the, the good lot, right? So, so here, you, uh, let us let us let me see to, to us to identify right what could be uh, so common or so outstanding uh, from our bad lot compared to good lot, right? So actually, I only show you some of these chart here because these are the most high plus parameter that actually we see uh, some commonality or see some abnormality. And normally, doesn't mean it's a problem. Okay, it's just that something that could be like, performs. Uh, they have a different performance compared between the good and bad lot, right? So actually, we started with uh, a list of 52 process parameters. Uh, cost parameter meanings uh, including the material badge, machine, right? The tool number, uh, the staging time. So, so there are a lot of items actually we are starting from. It. So what I can show you is just those that we, I will see, see that is some, something that is uh, different. So from here, actually, you can see the both of the lot, right? They use uh, a common uh, die saw machine and picking and place machine of four six. We also observe with the largest Z1, Z2 saw blade off center without R layer, right? But it's not R layer, but just just the highest uh, higher side, the higher side of the 
of the uh, offset, right? So with this, it could actually it could induce mechanical stresses. Okay, so this is the first level, and then uh, next will be the control chart. Uh, this control chart is actually set, uh, actually brought up using the JMP and other features, JMP control chart builder. So um, yeah, this red line is actually control limit, but don't, don't look at this uh, control limit for this time. So because we uh, actually plot using the average data, so that's why these are the raw data. So you can see a lot of data is out of control, but it is it's not the case. But what here to show here is that we are, we managed to identify the some of the bed lots like the bed, both of the bed lots actually is showing largest G one Z two saw break off center right with the wider variation right so here we can actually you can look at the there's a two chart the X bar out chart so right? so top is the X bar chart bottom is the range chart so for the range chart itself actually you can see the bed lot actually have highest variation compared to the bed put lot here. And for this control chart also, one good thing, that's why we once, just now we uh, we done the distribution, right? So when come to this control chart, we are not, I no need to check the, uh, for the rest of the 50 over parameter, or all of them. I just focus on those that identify from the distribution chart, right? So you will save us some time, okay? Okay, then that actually is the first uh, unit level, right? So then second thing I will actually I will show you the process sequence. Then we want to see any clustering on the process, whereby you can see, um, yeah, so this is the, actually the graph builder, that is another function that actually you can create the, uh, the visualization for a, a lot of uh, this uh, different data pairing but to see the interactive. Right. So from here, the bad lots actually identify as a red streak. The good lot is a blue. So we can see the bad lot, right? We have a two uh, actually impacted wafer number because we have only two rejects. So it actually uh, came in um, common from the other 21 and 29 from these two different lots. Right? But from here, you can see they are actually running uh, actually back to back process consequently. So we indicated it could be maybe it could be something happening during this uh, so-called dysaw process. Okay. So from here, you also can see that we also try to interact actually three parameter here, right? So you can see the interactive also, but it's the first level, right? And then uh, this is the pick and place also. We, so it's the same thing, we try to use graph builder. We also identify some back-to-back -back process on these two bad wafer. And again, so we do not know the, the this is the uh, other reject coming from which wave that, that's why, uh, but here we indicated something it could be wrong, right? You can pick and place, right? Okay, then this, again, come back to this dinosaur. Uh, here we actually identify, um, we try to interact within the wafer ID, right? There'll be about 25 wafer in the lot. So we also have the Z1, Z2 soccer length accumulation. So we also found that these two wafer actually they are processed right after the saw bed uh, dressing. Okay. So as you know, draw bed dressing to expose the uh, diamond so that you can in the cut the wafer more effectively. But if you do not expose the di uh, the the diamond, right, you can cut with the resin. You may have a knocking effect on the side wall and cause the problem. Okay. So this is another visualization. Right, that we can see from this analysis, just simple analysis, we can find out uh, the commodity. Okay. Okay. Then I want to move on to this bivariate, the FY by X uh, analysis, the continuous Y variable uh, compared with the category X. So here, um, yeah, actually, um, is the um, yeah we actually compare the bad uh, good log performance for the uh, Z one. Z2 off center at the maximum, minimum, and average. Okay. So here I'd like to bring you the attention on this red arrow here. Here is showing that the bad law actually has the highest uh, average in terms of the off center in these two parameters with compared to the good law. So normally we use uh, P value, to read, but uh, again, CMP has this circles that easily for us to identify whether they are significant different or not, right? Without 
first looking at the p value, right? The cost to confirm, we look at the p value. So the, beside the visualization, so we can also look into statistical uh, terms, or tested some test statistic to propose help us. And the the rest of this like uh, blue color arrow here is showing that the ballot actually has uh, again, it show that uh, the the lots may have uh, subject to the highest of center. Right, higher up central may have induced more stress on the sidewalk. Okay, so we see a community here again. Okay, and then the last one is a multi valued analysis. We uh, utilize the scatter plot analysis, which with the combined uh, combined effects. So this is the scatter plot analysis, uh, which is one of the uh, powerful features from the multi valued analysis in JMP. Here, um. Yeah, if you want to see uh, the interactive between two parameters. So here I introduce another parameter, which is a laser group, which is a narrow beam, a white beam, uh, off center, coupled with the saw one, Z1, Z2, mechanical saw, uh, this uh, off center. So here basically is this blue and the yellow box here are actually symmetric to each other. I just want to show you on this here, basically on the here, you can see there's a number. This number represents the uh, correlation or regressions. Uh, and since the highest the number is it, the, it means the more correlated between the, these two, each of the two parameters. And also the blue color, it means there is a negative uh, correlation and the red represents the uh, positive uh, regression. Of, so, and by looking at the shape also, actually uh, this shape, the cover shape also, you can see that it's the more thinner is it, the more uh, higher the correlation number is it. So for example, like this case, there's a star here, I try to map, so for example here, so you see there's a more narrow or more thinner, right? So it represents the highest number, which is minus 0.95. So the other two example I can show you, which is the plus mine. Plasma, uh, it has the negative correlation this way, and the plasma. Okay, from from here actually you can see the two bed lot uh, actually, uh, sub actually has the more up center, right? And these two parameter compared with the blue lots, as well as over here the plasma here. Okay, you can see. Okay, and then this uh, mechanical Z one Z two up center also. You can see bad law actually has a different performance than the good law, right? They are small at the more uh, off center. Okay. So this is the yeah, scalpel port analysis. And to double confirm it, we also can actually use utilize this uh, graph builder to just double check your data so we can see the asterisk mark is the uh, this color is, is the uh, bad laws, right? You can see that the uh, the band law actually has a combination of the worst uh, of center uh, in between the uh, laser groove as well as the mechanical saw. So laser groove of center and uh, uh, saw blade of center actually uh, it could be also a problem. But let's say one is going to the left, and another one going to the left, right bit. So this will induce the blade may uh, cut more nearer to the active side of the die, so it may cause a uh, more high stress on the active side of the of the die. Right, may cause a more, more problem. Right, so just to double check on this on these two points. So it, it still indicates that the bad lot has may have a uh, it has a different performance, but whether this performance will cause a problem or not, therefore we need to validate. It, okay. Right. Okay. The last one will be on this outlier analysis. Uh, this outlier analysis basically, yeah. It's showing that this uh, though this point are above this upper control limit here, it indicates that this could be a potential outlier wafer. There could be a different performance than those wafer at the bottom of the line. So, but uh, yeah, but and then this is another feature on JMP that we will allow us to look into from this a combination effect of all the process variable right under the constitution under consideration at the same time, right? And then actually further up from here, actually I can also uh, check out which process parameter actually contribute to this outlier. But for this case, I didn't I look in it, but I don't really see uh, something that could be uh, stand out. 
So I just leave it until here. But it still shows us that there could be some wafer, bad wafer. It could be a problem. Okay, so this again uh, is give us some uh, commodity on that uh, process offset. Okay, so this basically is the uh, the summary of this study. So the key community we see is both bad log but process consecutively on the Dyson machine 72. The both wafer number bad wafer they process right after bridge dressing. And then both of the bad lots have different performance than a good lot in terms of significant larger sorbet of centering and variation. And they have a burst combined op center as laser good and disolid. And they are more outlier, potential outlier wafer. They could be uh, yeah, from this, uh, all these available and uh, they are paying in the same time. So this is the summary of the process community, right? That we can use this data to come out a new hypothesis, which is on this slide. So this slide is showing the new hypothesis as well as some validation result. The first hypothesis is the one that you induce by mechanical stress uh, due to combi combine of worse laser glue and diastomic op -central. Right. So this is the new hypothesis come out from JMP. And then second hypothesis is the right, it could be induced by Dysol machine uh, equipment errors. As well as number three, it could be induced by TSI due to some irregulars handling at the SMT process. But um, somehow for hypothesis one, uh, like I mentioned, we will conduct SEM. Well, we found sign of Dysol sidewalk damage likely uh, this one is induced by the external force hitting. Right, it's not like, a, like the, the illegal force, right? And then the uh, we conduct the confirm again. We perform a re-perform the FA. We found that the physical measurement on the two validated uh, rejects, sorry, confirm has no significant break dicing offset, right? Based on this, actually we team think that the replication DOEs may not require. Okay. Whereas for hypothesis number two, right, we found some machine error stoppages, so therefore we actually managed to identify two opportunity improvement. And the hypothesis number three, we actually conducted some simulation, we able to reproduce some similar cracking actually. Right, so this is basically uh, search summary for this, uh, uh, this is now hypothesis with the three new hypotheses, and whereby one of them is uh, actually successful derived from the uh, JMP uh, community analysis, okay? Okay, this again, as I mentioned, uh, this is just a goal check, uh, the zombie. So to focus, right? So we managed to focus on this type two process, Dysol, Pink and Place. And yeah, we uh, introduced this uh, uh, structure problem solving strategy uh, by baselining community hepatitis, very simple four step to help us into the deep diving. So that we don't lose in the in the investigation, so we more focus, right? And yeah, third is the ensure substantial data that we are actually looking at the PT two or process parameter, right? Before we actually do out the assembly survey as a possible problem, right? We managed to utilize JMP distribution, uh, control chart builder, crop builder. Fit by Y by X, create problematics as well as outliers analysis to help us to be look into this uh, process data to before so that we can be more focused and more selectively for the uh, validation and hypothesis. Right here, I want to share, share to you is that basically we conduct 100% site wide out on three wafer lot, then we found zero die crack that's been so this will give us more confidence that the issue. Uh, more likely, yeah, it will be quite safe to say that SME house may not induce this such a problem. Okay, so here we look into a, a more data, so we have more confidence when we come out the uh, conclusion. And then, yeah, we managed to identify three hypotheses. One is from JMP, and we also identified two opportunity on improvement, and this we able to reproduce the problem right at the test screen. Okay, so so all the goal basically we have been achieved. I mean checks. Okay, and yes, the last but not least, sometimes summarize this problem. Yeah, so first we did able to define a problem clearly. We explore the process diaries. I would say uh, we are more confident compared when we uh, before uh, task force is being engaged. We have uh, three hypotheses, and as well as we validate this through a simulation and the extended failure analysis. And the last, yeah, 
we I think we managed to solve problem. We managed close AD with the test induced issue, and as well as we don't receive any similar problem for the last seven months, going to eight months for now. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I guess that's all my sharing today. Thank you very much. Yeah. So yeah, please let me know if there are any questions. Yeah. Hey, thank you so much. Yes, we do have a few questions, right? Um, all right. Let me have a look at this. All right. Um, one from John Yik. To determine the failure of the chiplets beside using the SEM, could the AFM or WLI be utilized? To be honest, I yeah, this AFM or WLI is quite quite new to me. Yeah, I have fit. I may not not able to give you a good answer here. Yeah, I think it's okay. quite new term to me. Yes. No problem. No problem. No problem. Hey, Liming, Liming, can I pick it up for DPA? Ah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure okay. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, thank you, thank you. Okay, so friends, we are looking at the. If you look at, consider this screen as a as a wafer level CSP is a rectangular tablet, and we want to examine a sidewall crack. Okay, so we want to go a bit deeper on the uh, edges of the die. So if you use the AFM atomic force microscope, so you probably will get a good resolution if you're only looking at the surface defects, but then the vertical scanning would be a problem, or you may not be able to do the right positioning of the sample using AFM. So that would be a problem over there. So the, here, the best way would be, you load this entire die into the scanning electron microscope, SEM, and you can tilt the sample 45 degree, you can turn it around and you can get all the details that, that you're looking for, okay? So AFM is a very nice tool with the, with the, with the nanometer metrology capability, but that would not be required or very effective for this case, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Pradeep. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah, probably is our FA expert, actually. Help me on here. Yeah, sorry, I'm not FA expert, actually. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Aravin, my apologies, but today we're not going to be uh, doing a demo on Jump itself, but we are planning a similar session in the future with the demo on Jump. So we'll um, pop in to us. So we will uh, announce the event once it's ready. Right. My apologies, Aravin. Uh, all right. I think that's all of the questions that we have today. Yeah, one that's one, but I'm not sure if you, you're going to answer that. The baseline can be initializing of variables of model X0. Do you understand the question? <laughs> Let me find. Yeah, it's X0. Initializing of variable. Um, what? Normally in the okay, what well, normally in the uh, six sigma, right? We can actually we, are, we we try to modernize the the issue, right? Uh, but this is my understanding. I'm not really sure whether I can answer you. We normally you we we model like y equal to uh you know x one plus x two plus x three. This is normally what uh, we use the six sigma methodology like uh, DMI to 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 mod to model the problem. Um. So the Y could be the, for my case, like the Y could be, will be the die chipping, right, uh, die crack. X1 could be, or X0, it could be the, uh, the saw, the offset shift, right? Second Y could be some, uh, the, uh, this uh, laser groove uh, offset also, right? And then um, the third X could be the, uh, this uh, some machine error, Errorness. They actually we identify some machine errors. Uh, I can show you more on that. Is we actually identify the dressing. We are not. They are not really doing. Uh, we, we see some abnormal on the dressing. There's a spike. Uh, with that actually there's no spike on the dressing. But normally dressing after dressing the blade, you expose the diamond, right? So somehow we don't see that kind of uh, uh, spike on the chart, which you normally should see. So we actually request them to. To the the site, right, the assembly site, to look into this depth deeper. So we managed to come out uh, some uh, uh, opportunity of improvement for that one. 
So then if you really want to model it, you'll be like y equal to x1 plus x2. You know, from there, uh, see, normally we'll do DOE, right? So with DOE, we we'll combine all the effect, we we'll set up all the different x uh, level to come to so that we can come up what kind of level of the y. So here maybe you want to uh, model your y to be uh, how how big is the chipping, you know, or, or this so that you can quantify it. So yeah, that that is I can try I can share to you on the the the, the sex sigma D mic con, uh, conception. Yeah. Let me see. Um, yeah, there's correct. a few more. Yeah. And, uh, Melissa, one quick input here. Add on. Yes. Um, sure. 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 Just in just in case if some uh, engineer are interested in looking the process shift and those kind of things, I think Jamp has a powerful tool that is called process screening. You can opt for that. And also there's a Kusum, uh, like it's a weighted average uh, uh, shifting things that you can really look into that. So if you want to look for this baseline shift and all those things, so there you may, there you may get good idea. And then you try to model it with the, with the information that let me just provide it. So overall that would give you a total idea. Okay, this was my baseline. This is where I got my shift. And these are the variables which are causing the shift. And that's how, you can get a complete picture from Gem. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Uh, so in order to do a modeling, you must have quantify your you must measure my measure your thing thing to be measurable. If you as long as you go for go and no go, right? That that will be difficult to modelize. Yeah. Okay. Um I think there's one more. There's one or two more. Yeah. What is your curve KERF to groove clearance for this problem? Um, the clearance is, I think it's quite, quite, quite big. Uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't show you this data. Um, uh, is I think more than ten micron. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, at least more. So that's why we when we measure this, right? Got you know this is already singulated, right? We 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 can't really measure on uh, the that's just a sidewall only. We have to assuming uh measure from the center of the source street. To the clearance, you know, to the to the active side, right? So from there we measure the reject unit, and we know that the current is quite big. I think it's about ten to fifteen micron, but somehow this reject uh, really uh, quite quite safe in in terms of that currents. So we actually, yeah, the team decided. I mean, they concluded that there is not really a, uh, causing that kind of stress and kind of problem. Yeah. Okay. Hope I answered. But I cannot give you an exact number. Right, so it's a uh, priority on that. No problem. Thank you so much. Um, one more, and there's also a few guys that raise up their hand. So let's do one more on the chat. How do we define its right after blade dressing? Okay. Can you can you repeat again, Lisa? How how do we define it is right after the blade dressing? Oh, okay. Does it make sense? Uh, yes, yes, that makes sense. So maybe I can go to the, uh, the chat again. Uh, yes, this one. Uh, okay, so you can see here uh, we have Z1, Z2, right? Uh, Spread. Actually, here this number is present the meter. The meter on how 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 long this the blade uh, have been sawn. So you can see here that this one actually for this particular device X it actually has around uh seven hundred uh, meter that where the dressing dressing will be will be carried out right. So from here actually we we can actually map back the actually when is the dressing was done. So that's why we might manage to find to identify these two wafer. They are actually actually right after the dressing to be, uh, to be exact. Actually, we have done dressing also at the, I think it's the, I think this is the second dressing. So the first dressing is around 350. Yeah. Okay. I think there's one question asking whether this is a step cut. Uh, this is not step cut. This is a dual single, uh, dual blade single cuts, dual spindle single cut. Z1 is a, yeah, it's a one blade. In us, one spindle, this is an us spindle, so it's a two. Dual spindle single cut. Okay. But it's a laser group. Laser group plus single cut. Yeah. I mean, stack cut, it, it means it's, it's a mechanical dress uh, cut, right? So, but this is a single uh, 
magnetizing plus the uh, laser group. Yeah. Okay, I hope I answered that. Okay. Yeah, we have another one. Um, Kerwin, you raised your hand and you wanted to ask a question. I've already allowed you to unmute if you want to ask your question. This is this will be the last question, Ming Chong. Okay. Me... okay. Sure. Kerwin, Kerwin, would you like to ask your question? Oh, did he? Yeah, no, sorry. Okay, all right. So that's no more question. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much, Liming. Um, I think that will be the end of the session, right? Um, and again, my apologies that we are not gonna, we are not able to share this recording. But I hope, and uh, we hope that this sharing by Liming has been very uh, valuable to everyone, and hope that this will help you in your industry and also um, open up your eyes and how you can use Jump. Um, at its full potential. Thank you, Liming. Thank you, Pradeep. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, the NXP team, for having this session with us and giving us this great sharing. Um, watch out for the upcoming events on 2nd of June and also on the 30th of June. If you guys have any question, um, do let us know. Our email is at jumpasia at jmp.com. Jumpasia at jmp.com. Um, see you guys again. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Be safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Bye.